Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale Trailer Train F68 AH class bulkhead flat car from Scale Trains. This model is part of the Scale Trains rivet counter line. My car is decorated in the TTX 1991 speed logo scheme. I also bought another car in the earlier Trailer Train yellow scheme. I got my car for $41.99 direct from Scale Trains. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window. Inside, a two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. The car is wrapped in some thin, flexible plastic to guard against scratches. There are plastic protectors on the trucks that need to be removed carefully. A sheet of laser-cut wood decking is included, which needs to be cut out and installed. We'll talk about that more later. Scale Trains also includes an instruction sheet with prototype information and exploded view drawings. Unlike some other recent Scale Trains rivet counter offerings, this model does not come with extra rotating end caps for the axles. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. I was only able to find one photo of this particular car from 2018. Physically, the car is a very close match. The paint job on the car from 2018 is slightly different with the newer red TTX logo. I found photos of other cars in this class and there is some variation in the prototype paint jobs. The model looks very typical of cars in the same number series. Given that the last of these cars were built in 1974, it wouldn't be unusual if they've been repainted at least once. I'm going to give the model the benefit of the doubt with regard to paint. Production on these cars began in 1969, and some are still in service, so they're appropriate for most modern era layouts. The paint on the model is opaque, and in most places it's thin enough not to obscure detail. The areas of darker yellow paint on the car sides are a bit thicker, though the paint doesn't soften the detail too much. All of the markings are crisp and the tiny writing is legible with magnification. I love the super thin stirrup steps on the corners that look to be near exact scale. I would use caution when handling the car to avoid damage to this area. The sides of the bulkheads have freestanding wire grab irons. On the ends, the car has more freestanding grab irons. The detail on the bulkhead is great and includes simulated wood planking on both the inner and outer surfaces. The crossover platforms are photo etched. The uncoupling levers and air hoses are plastic, so again I'd advise caution when handling the model. The B end has a delicate looking brake wheel and chain. As I've seen on another recent Scale Trains release, the brake wheel is molded in yellow plastic instead of painted. On this car, the encoupling levers are too. Because the plastic is translucent, it gives this otherwise beautifully detailed model a bit of a toy-like appearance. Weathering the car would help this area look better. The deck on my car has raised transverse risers. As I mentioned earlier, the decking is real wood and is supplied as a separate part to be installed by the modeler. I don't normally include weathering as part of my reviews, but I just can't see gluing this pristine looking wood to the car as it is. If it gets any glue on it, the wood will be harder to weather later. I'm going to start with a product called Silverwood by Builders and Scale. This is an alcohol-based stain that's supposed to make the wood look grayed. I'll brush some on both sides to wet the wood evenly and reduce the chances of warping. Once I'm done, I'll set it aside and put some weight on it to keep it flat while it dries. I'm using this small level because it's handy, but you could use just about anything that will keep the wood flat. After letting the part dry overnight, the next step is to use some weathering powders. Mine are by Bragdon, but there are other brands as well. I'll start with a light gray color. I'm using a stiff bristled brush to scrub the powder into the wood. After the gray, I'll switch to black and give it a second coat. I'll put a quick coat on the bottom edges too, just in case any of it shows after the deck is assembled. This is a micro brush. I'm going to use this to add a little variation to selected boards. I'll use some tan colored powder and apply it here and there with the micro brush. There we go. That looks a lot more like what you'd typically see on an in-service flat car. Before I glue the deck to the car, I also want to weather the risers. I'll start by spraying the entire car with some Tester's Dull Coat, which will give the car a nice matte finish that will take weathering better than the factory paint. Using prototype photos for inspiration, I'm brushing the risers with some gray powder followed by dark rust. That looks a lot more like the photos. It's a lot easier to weather this part of the car before the wood decking is applied. Now I can cut out the individual deck pieces. The instructions say that the decking is to be applied by the modeler, but they don't give any recommendations about what kind of glue to use. I'm using thick CA, which has a higher viscosity than regular super glues and works well to bond plastic to wood. This one is by Zap. The deck pieces are not all the same size, so be sure to test fit each one. 
The slots in the sides of the deck pieces should line up over the stake pockets on the side of the car. Because thick CA has a slower cure time, I had to hold some of the deck pieces down for a few seconds before they bonded. There were two extra deck pieces included. I'll put those in my scrap box. I'll save weathering the rest of the car for the future, but I'm glad I did this part before putting the decking on. It'll make a good base for adding more weathering and possibly a load. Underneath the car has excellent brake system detail with very fine wire plumbing. The trucks have rotating end caps. The car comes with scale trains knuckle couplers on extended shanks. The coupler on the A end is at the correct height. The coupler on the B end is slightly high, so I'm taking five points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no body wobble. The model weighs 4.3 ounces without the decking. With the decking, it weighs 4.4 ounces. The NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length is 5.75 ounces. Adding a load would be the easiest way to add weight, though the car seems heavy enough that it should track well even as is. The car is somewhat free rolling. I don't think that the slight rolling resistance is enough to be a problem in most cases. Let's see what we've got. The car had one high coupler, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total of 95 out of 100 possible points, which is a solid A on a report card. This is an excellent model and it deserves a green signal. I think it's great that we're finally starting to see some good quality bulkhead flat cars in HO scale. I think Scale Trains did a great job with this model, and if you're looking for some bulkhead flat cars for your layout, then I think you'll like it.